am um, hi, I'm Kirti Premadasa, I'm the professor of mathematics. Um, so usually I'm entrusted with waking up people who are asleep. So it's very late in the day, right? So I can hopefully work, wake some of you up, and uh, my students might be able to carry that forward. All right. So this going to, so this whole project started a uh, long time ago. Uh, you know, all of us calc professors. Uh, we use calculus to uh, maximize and minima, minimize things because when something is maximum or something is minimum, at the top place we have a horizontal tangent, which uh, calculus say is, uh, can be very easily calculated. So what happens is we take this wonderful example, how can we um, uh, minimize the cost of a Coke can, a great American Coke can, while keeping the volume at 12 or uh, the... Uh, Wait as 12 ounces. So I remember as a grad student uh, at Purdue University, as a TA, I enthusiastically solved this problem uh, uh, to, to my students, right, naturally. What happened was the, and I got a certain radius and I got a certain height. Unfortunately, the Coke can turned out to be a box. <laughs> it was six centimeters uh, uh, wide, right, and six centimeters high. So uh, it was very embarrassing. Uh, I've been very careful uh, not to emphasize that example here afterwards. So mathematicians have tried to try to make sense. Something is wrong. Is calculus wrong? Uh, unlikely. Are we doing something wrong? Uh, I don't know. And they have made, tried to make some sense, but they have not been able to for a long time. And, and pretty much research says that they have tried to improve the shape, but not to a great extent. But now the question is, why couldn't they do it? See, the problem is more complex than mathematics. Mathematics is actually where, you know, mathematicians are generally abstract people, geeks. We like to work with our mind. But this problem requires some knowledge of business, some knowledge of measuring things, some knowledge of metals, right? The kind of creepy things that we don't want to do. We only <laughs> like to deal with the mind. So when I found my team, I was delighted. Because in my team we had everybody, we had, we had Bryce, right, who is actually a person who is very much into everything. <laughs> so he could measure and he could do the analysis and then we also encountered a couple of geeks in the sense of uh, Noah has a judge and I. So I thought they are the ones who are going to find a name. And they did, ladies and gentlemen, so this is a breakthrough. These people finally managed to come very close to an ultimate solution of the famous cook can problem. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. P. That was wonderful. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Noah Helen Dodge, and this is Lai Young, and this is. Bryce Brecker, and uh, we just wanted to thank Dr. Prima Dasa for coming to us with this problem, and Professor Paul Martin from UW Marathon County for uh, helping us solve this problem, and um, Dr. Seals and Dean Planger for giving us the opportunity to present our findings to you. Um, and we optimize the Coke can. Um, Coke cans are fairly modern. Um, aluminum has replaced tin and steel in 1957. And um, they weren't really um, optimized until the 1980s because plastic was becoming lighter, so they needed to find a better way to make the Coke can lighter. Um, Sand tabs weren't invented until 1974, which wasn't that long ago. And um, actually, super end tabs were only invented in 2000, so Coke cans are still being optimized today. Hi, I'm Lai. I'm the most frequently awakened of students by Dr. P in the class. <laughs> when I get sleepy, uh, Dr. P always sings, Are you sleepy? Are you sleepy? <laughs> no, I'm like, Pum. Okay, anyways. Uh, in this project, we try to find the best combination of radius and radius and height of the Coke can to make the cost of the Coke can the least. And yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, um, this model is the first model we established, which is a cylindrical model. And uh, this is the, the model uh, embarrassed Dr. B uh, 50, 50 years ago. <laughs> um, uh, we found two equations um, to optimize the radius and height. And the surface area equation and the volume equation. Uh, the volume is a constant. 12 ounce, which is 355.86, uh, uh, no, 84 uh, cm cube. And we use this volume equation to find the expression of H in terms of R to plug it back, uh, plug it into the surface area equation to cancel out one variable, make it only one variable in the surface area equation so that we can take the derivative of this, uh, the equation and find a critical point to solve for R. And uh, R turned, to, turned out to be 3.84 centimeters and height is 7.7 centimeters. Uh, twice the radius will be 7.68, which is almost the same as height. That's how we got the cube, which makes sense because when we want to find the, uh, the, the um, the, the least uh, surface area um, for a fixed volume body, um, the closer the sides are, cl um, are e to each other, um, the smaller the surface area would be. In this case, we didn't consider the thickness and any details of the can. And this, um, this result turned out to be way um, off from the actual measurement. So. The next thing that we wanted to look at after we got our cylindrical results was what have other people done with this study? So uh, one study by Stewart found that uh, they instead looked at how do we minimize the wastage from the pucks that the aluminum cans are formed out of. And they found that if you cut in a hexagonal matter as opposed to a circle, you can reduce the wastage from the source material quite a lot. However, due to the efficiency of recycling that has come into play with modern aluminum, we kind of thought that this might not be the best way to optimize Coke can production. Instead, we looked at another uh, study by Professor Schroeder that also considered cost, um, but he still used a cylindrical model, and we didn't think that was quite robust enough. So our model that we've created looks at the complex shapes of the Coke can, the thicknesses of the top, bottom, and side regions, and also the costs associated with those regions. So the first complex shape that we're going to be dealing with is called a frustum. So what a frustum is, is these uh, interesting beveled shapes on the top and the bottom of the Coke can right here. We can describe their surface area as the larger radius plus the smaller radius times the height times pi. And the volume can be described as pi times the height divided by three times the larger radius squared plus the smaller radius squared plus the small radius times the large radius. Now the reason we need these two equations is because, as Lai talked about before, we need to be able to constrain our optimization to one variable, and that's what two equations allow us to do. Now why did they introduce the frustum at all? Well, it turns out the top and the bottom of the can are actually the most expensive part. They cost about three times more than the side. So our original cube can is actually a terrible way of making soda because it is incredibly expensive. Um, the next shape that we're going to look at is the spherical cap. So the spherical cap is the lovely little uh, curved area at the bottom that many people have wondered, what the heck is that for? Well, first of all, we looked at the surface area as 2 pi times the radius times the height. Uh, this radius, however, is the radius of a sphere and not the radius that we can actually measure. Uh, for that, we're going to look at the, the volume, which is pi times height divided by 6 times 3a squared plus h squared. Um, and the reason that spherical caps are integrated into Coke design is because it creates a necessary structural integrity. Coke cans, when filled, are pressurized vessels, and curved surfaces, when applied to pressure, are actually much stronger. If the bottom of the Coke can was flat, during shipping, it could actually bulge out and create a catastrophic can failure, which would be just a terribly sticky and awful situation for anyone involved. Um, so as we explained, 
top frustrum, bottom frustrum, cylindrical core, the top and the bottom spherical cap, and this annular strip on the bottom. Um, we also had to consider the two cost regions and the two thick or yeah, two thickness regions. Um, the top equation is combining these complex structures into a word equation. The bottom equation is our cost, which may seem simple, but the variables Q, P, and R are highly complex, co complex constants that have been factored out to make our equation more malleable, leaving us with radius and height. But we need another equation to solve radius in terms of cost. So here comes the volume equation again. Uh, like we did for the uh, first model, um, we find the equation of volume, which is 355. Um, that um, uh, in, is consists of uh, three or uh, four parts. The top first term, um, the bottom first term, and the cylinder, and minus the sp spherical cap. Um, so here's a question here. Um, anybody can tell why we have a half um, times the first at the top first them. I can give you a gift if, if you can answer this question. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> All right, because the 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 cocaine is not uh, fully filled, um, it's only filled up to half of the not enough actually. The the top first them is half filled, half empty. Uh, come to me and I will give you a gift afterwards. <laughs> um, so again, um, the, the expression is really complicated. So we use uh, R prime, Q prime, a P prime, and N prime to uh, represent a very, comple um, com um, very complex um, constants. And again, we find the expression of H in terms of R, and um, plug the um, plug H to the cost equation, and then we differentiate it, and we set the differentiation to zero um, to get the critical points, which gives us the um, radius vol uh, value for the minimum 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 cost. Here we go. This is uh, how the equations look like without um, using P prime, N prime, R prime, and Q prime, the, the total cost equation and the volume constraint equation. All right, so we've been talking about limiting our equation to the variable R, but there's obviously more variables going on here than just R. And the reason that we do this is these are actually mathematical constants that we can directly measure. But we w don't want to put these constants into the equation right away because if we make any algebraic errors or measurement errors and start putting numbers in for all of these, any one error could completely ruin the entire calculation and make us have to do this entire equation over again. So what we did was we represented uh, the, uh, vari the variables that we need to measure as things like C2 or D2, which represent the cost region of two or the thickness region of two. Um, and you'll see we've got some trig in here, actually quite a lot of that. And the reason that we use trig is some things aren't actually uh, directly measurable on this can. These uh, 0.66 secant theta one represents this, the height of this top frustrum. And what we had to do was measure the radius difference where you get the 0.66 and the secant, which is the angle that we can measure to find the height for our volume equations. So next let's, talk, next, let's talk about the measurements a little bit. Uh, the only true variable that we have on here is our radius of the cylinder. This is the thing we're controlling to optimize the can. Everything else here are things that we measure. Some of these are really easy to measure, some of them not so much. Uh, one of the things that's actually surprisingly difficult to measure are these other radiuses, these smaller ones, because if we vary this large radius and don't vary the small radiuses, we're going to get really weird can sizes. So we decided to constrain that by just having the difference between the radiuses as 0.66, which you see right here. Um, as far as the other measurements go, we used the micrometer from Professor Roberta in the physics lab to measure the thicknesses, and we found that the side is about 
0.1 millimeter, which is the equivalent of a human hair. It's kind of crazy that that can hold a can together. Um, the bottom is three times as thick as that, and the top is two times as thick. And the last thing that we had to measure were our angles. We used protractors initially, but we wanted to make sure that we weren't just like eyeballing things and getting them completely wrong. So we also used trigonometry to calculate the difference using the radiuses. And gratifyingly enough, we came within two degrees on both of those calculations, which seemed to confirm our original measurement. So now that we've taken all these measured constants and inputted them into this beautiful equation, what do we get as a result? Well, we get this rather cute looking kind of optimized cubic equation right there. So this is the, uh, this is the equation that we have to solve for the critical points that Lai was talking about earlier that will give us the minimum cost. So when we solve this, you see there's only one critical point right here, but you'd expect there to be three because of r to the cube. Well, that's because there's only one real root. The other two are imaginary. So those don't do us much good unless you can kind of manipulate time and space to create an imaginary can for us, which if you can do that, you probably aren't optimizing Coke cans to begin with. But um, the root that we did find corresponded to a radius of 2.89 centimeters and a height of 12.89. All right, and then on this graph, you can see our actual minimum as in like a slope. Um, when the two radii are put back into the, our cost equation, the original, like this Coke can radius and then our new Coke can radius, um, our post Coke can um, cost 0 0.0174 of a cent. I don't know. <laughs> it's a very small number. It's a different difference of two hundredths of a cent since an actual um, Coke can cost point zero one seven six of a dollar um, and that may not seem very impressive when you are grabbing pennies out of your wallet but if there are 100 billion cans made every year which we found in a 1998 census so it's probably a lot higher now then that is a two twenty million dollar difference every year so in, d in addition to our significant economic impacts of having an optimized coke can there's also some serious environmental impacts involved so the average aluminum Coke can made today is composed of 32% raw aluminum. And raw aluminum is actually very energy intensive to create. Um, so what our design does is it helps reduce aluminum usage by 4.61 million kilograms a year. The other costs that uh, we reduce in association with that are the energy costs that go into making this aluminum, which is 54 million kilograms of coal uh, to give the electricity to make these cans. 37 million kilograms of bauxite, which is the ore that aluminum is derived from, 19 million kilograms of chemical byproducts associated to the manufacturing process, and perhaps most astonishingly, 148 billion kilograms of CO2 each year could be saved by our small optimization to the Coca-Cola can design. So overall, we did not find any other studies uh, that defined a modern Coke can using equations. Um, and then when soda companies actually design these cans, they're using supercomputers and engineers, and all we had were our wonderful professors, uh, Dr. Prima Dasa and Dr. Bartons, and uh, Sage Math, Wolfram Alpha, and a bunch of whiteboards, which you saw pictures of <laughs> earlier. Um, uh, however, we do not know if this model is stable, considering we don't have the means of making a soda can or means of production of this new soda can. But despite this, we found a reasonable optimization that provides significant cost savings using a purely mathematical model.